in December 2007, there were two reports of UFOs over Texas. I am scared. The girls were screaming. Some of them were crying. Within a month, the number grew to over 200 sightings as the swarm began to move south. Almost like a flock of birds. I hope it's not. This never-before-seen video may contain proof of a UFO infestation plaguing this small town. Probably the end of our civilization as we know it. From police officers' testimonies to, to video and photographic evidence seen for the first time. I can't explain that. And startling eyewitness accounts. The team investigates the most recent and biggest UFO sighting in American history. Are the residents caught in the middle of a military cover-up? I couldn't answer anything on that. Or are they witnessing something even more unfathomable? What is going on here? This is case number 08199, Invasion Texas 2008. Stephenville, Texas is a quiet, small town, home to only 16,000 people, located about 70 miles southwest of Fort Worth. It's known for being a leader in dairy farming and as the self-proclaimed cowboy capital of the world. But on January 10, 2008, it made newspaper headlines across the country for its mass UFO sighting, which continued for the next several weeks. Two large, glowing, red objects. We're not making no sign that was silent. I counted probably maybe 10, 12, 14 lights. A media frenzy begins. Dozens of people startled by a large silent object with bright lights flying low and fast tell their stories to local and national press. The news was carried across the globe by the Associated Press, cable news networks, and most national and local newspapers and TV stations. And since then, many Texans have been paying closer attention to what's in the sky. I have to stress that this is an ongoing investigation. This just happened last month. It's very fresh. And just talking to some of the locals, you're really getting the feeling that there is something going on here. Pilot Steve Allen and his friends reportedly spot a UFO on January 8th, describing it as having lights spanning about a mile long and a half a mile wide. Leroy Gayton, a police constable, describes it as one red and white glowing light moving very fast. What was this anomalous object? Government officials first state there was no military craft on the evening of January 8th. Soon after, a reversal. The military issues a second statement, saying that actually, yes, 10 F-16s were launched for a training session. The residents find something peculiar about that. Just totally silent. No sound. I never heard a sound. There wasn't any noise. How can multiple jet fighter aircraft not produce a sound? This was an unusual object of some sort. We have multiple eyewitness accounts, so what we have to do is go out and meet these other people. Each one of these is a puzzle piece that may help us put a larger picture together that we can understand. On February 25th, 2008, the team moves their headquarters across from the Stephenville Courthouse. Let's put the whiteboard right on this wall back there. Then we can put the maps up over here. They open their door to anyone who can provide information about this case. Well, gentlemen, we're officially in business. And now we're fully set up. We got the things that we need. We got maps of the local area. We're on full UFO hunter alert here. First step, we are going to talk to witnesses. If we can establish geometries around these sightings, and then if they corroborate, we can triangulate positions. We are not only need to know, you know, the location and environment, we definitely need to know what we're looking at. The sizes, the colors, uh, object description, right. 
Also, this is a very heavy military area, so did the military have planes in the air on the nights in question? There are a number of specific questions the team wants to address in order to solve this mystery. Why here? Why in Texas? Why here? It is 28 minutes now before 9 o'clock in Pablo. We are joined in studio with the guys from UFO Hunters. Good morning, men. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The team puts out a citywide call over 98.5 KCUB for witnesses of the UFO swarm. We'd like to actually invite anyone to come down to our headquarters. We're also looking for even further evidence, so any kinds of photos or video footage or anything that's more tangible. It doesn't take long. Hi, this is Ted Ackworth. This is Jeffrey Tomlinson. And I'm from UFO Hunters and uh, UFO Magazine. Your sighting was the night of January 8th, is that correct? The team gathers as much information as possible from a number of phone calls. Yeah, well, that's what other people are describing as well. Personal Jeff interviews. Then I saw this object, and then as it got a little closer, I realized it didn't have any wings. And media reports. Surprisingly, many witnesses in this traditional southern town come forward with their sightings. We're not a bunch of space alien aficionados or anything like that. That's why it's surprising that a lot of upstanding citizens are coming forward with this sighting. The team receives a phone call from an Arath County police sergeant who witnessed the alleged UFO. He phones in his account because he wishes not to be seen. The team has verified his identity. I looked at it from, from a distance, it, it was bright. It appeared to be spinning and it changing colors. Well, Sergeant, is there any chance that this object could have been a, an airplane or a helicopter? In my perception, I would say no. There's obviously something going on. We've got reports of a, a, a huge craft, mile long wide, half a mile wide, reports of smaller objects that people swear are not airplanes, and these people know they're airplanes. The description, time, and location of the UFO vary from person to person. Is this a case of a single object or multiple objects? What kind of hard science, what kind of hard evidence do we have? But there is one witness who can provide more than just his testimony. Yeah, me and my grandson was coming home from renting movies one night and we're driving down this road here, coming in this direction, and my grandson said he's seen lightning in the sky. David Caron, a former oil rigger and local mechanic, was alerted by his grandson of something in the sky around 9 p.m. on January 19th. So you saw the object. What caught your attention when you were looking at it? Uh, the light. Mm -hmm. I was like running. Yeah, okay, you said it looked like lightning? I didn't see no lightning, not on my side. You never seen these lights before? Um, I went and told my papa. He went out here and captured it. I went into the house, I got my camcorder and started 